My first guest is a popular columnist, TV commentator, and head of the Media Research Center. It's America's leading media watchdog. His latest best-selling book is called Unmask, Big Media War Against Trump. Please welcome to the show, Brent Bozell. Brent, I want to get right to uh, the fact that you were not a big Trump supporter back in 2016, but you've written a book about how the media has certainly uh, been a little, let's just say, less than charitable toward the president. Uh, what do you see in the coverage of this president different than in the past? Well, um, I was a Cruz supporter in the primaries. Um, so, I, you know, I didn't come at this book from, my, from the standpoint of being a Trump sycophant, which is what gives credibility, I think, to the book. Um, but what you're seeing with this president, Mike, is, is an attack more ferocious uh, than on any president in the history of this country both from the standpoint of quantity, the number of negative stories, and quality, the way in which they're presented. I've never seen anything like this. In 32 years of analyzing the press, we've seen bias, we've seen stories that are wrong. I've never seen this kind of fakery. One of the uh, things that kind of, I guess, justify a lot of the media attacks, they say that they're doing their fact checking. I'll be honest with you, when I hear the word fact checker, I generally think of advocate because most of the so-called fact checkers are nothing near checking actual facts. But the public seems to think there's credibility there. How do you, how do you battle that? When you've got these fact checkers that are as liberal as the news organizations that are being used, well, there are, they are constantly going to find fault with, with somebody. For example, it was, I think, the Washington Post just recently was awarding four Pinocchios to Donald Trump. I believe it was. It was this uh, because he kept using the phrase socialist and they were saying Democratic Party policies are not socialist. Well, of course they are. But the fact checkers decided decided they weren't. You know, Brent, one of my uh, funniest moments, I got hit by the Washington Post for four Pinocchios and their fact checker checked me on a fact. You know where I sourced my fact? was the Washington Post. Who's that? I, I thought it was amazing. So I used their material and they said, no, your material is, is, is faulty. And I'm thinking, well, I got it from you guys. So what? let's go to some specific- Why do I believe you? <laughs> some specific journalists, uh, or let me say some specific TV personalities. You got people like Rachel Maddow on MSNBC and Don Lemon on CNN. And they beat the drum of the Russia collusion story night after night after night. Do you think for a moment they honestly believed that the president of the United States was a paid agent of Russia? No, but they were hoping somebody could possibly find that out for them. Uh, this, you know, the president is right when he calls this fake news. He has said since day one, since the very first story appeared, and all of his supporters have said since day one, since the story first appeared, there is no evidence of this. They kept pointing to the Mueller investigation. When it comes out, it's going to tell you for once and for all. It's going to answer it. So the Mueller response came out. What was the response? There is no collusion. There is no evidence anywhere of collusion. A good journalist would drop it at that point. A good journalist would say, well, I was wrong for two years. It's over. The report has come out. All they've done like, is they've just doubled down on it. They're now having hearings where they're dragging Mueller into the hearing room to grill him some more, as if there's something he's now hiding from the American people. I don't know. One of the things I want you to, to try to express is just how unbalanced is the coverage. And, and offer a few examples of ways in which the media has just gone off the left side of earth in the coverage of President Trump. Um, if you were to call Barack Obama a Nazi, what would be the reaction? <laughs> or a communist or anything along those lines? You get fired. Correct. You would say nah, and before Zeke came out, you'd be fired. In the case of Donald Trump, it's a regular uh, adjective that is used. The Nazi Donald Trump. The fascist Donald Trump. This is thrown out by networks with, with impunity. If you were to say of Barack Obama's daughter, that she was a feckless, and I cannot even give you the letter, dot, 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 a feckless, unbelievable, 
obscene, unbelievably obscene word, the daughter of Barack Obama, what would happen? You'd lose your job mm. uh, 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 absolutely correctly if you did so. Samantha B did that about Ivanka Trump, the president's daughter. The audience applauded her for it. Eventually, she had to apologize. Joy Behar called uh, Vice President Mike Pence's religion a mental illness, his Christianity. This is the kind of incredible double standard that's taking place. It is not only that one thing is allowed on one side and one thing is not allowed on the other, but what is allowed is so over the top disgusting that, and they can get away with it with impunity now. Well, your book is a great service to the people of America. I hope they read it because I hope they understand that when they're depending on the Washington Post, New York Times, or one of the networks to get information about our country, uh, they probably better keep digging because they may not get the truth. That's why they need your book. And if you yeah. want to know why a president with such a great record gets 90% negative coverage, then read the book. It's called Unmask, Big Media's War Against Trump. It's on Amazon. You can get it at all major booksellers. And to see how the media twists the news, visit newsbusters.org. You can also follow Brent on Twitter at Brent Bozell.